My dear young friends, we're coming to Ash Wednesday and the beginning of Lent. And on Ash Wednesday, Catholics all over the world receive ashes on their foreheads as an act of humility before God, as a sign of sorrow for their sins and a pledge of their serious commitment um, to make the season of Lent a very important spiritual moment for them. I kind of play a wee game in Ash Wednesday. I've always done it. It's uh, I try to keep the sign of the ashes on my forehead for as long as I can. I don't wipe them off. Um, and you see people walking about with with a, a dark smudge on their foreheads during Ash Wednesday. Um, and even in today's world, which isn't particularly religious, many people still uh, recognise that mark on our heads. They may not know what it what it means, but or they don't know in detail, but they know it's something to do with God and it's something to do with a desire for us to be uh, a more uh, a better person, a more authentic person. Um, they may even know it's about a special time of year that leads to um, Good Friday and Easter Sunday to the death of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus, moments of great religious significance. Um, so, you know, getting our ashes can be really a moment of witness, a little act of evangelization and of spreading the gospel. So let me say to you, Ash Wednesday is coming. Go to Mass in Ash Wednesday. Uh, um, get your ashes. Don't wipe them off too soon. Um, uh, and let them be seen for the glory of God. The 40 days of Lent are modelled on the 40 days that Jesus spent in the desert fasting and praying before he began his public ministry. And it's Catholic practice to take on a Lenten penance and to try to maintain that penance as faithfully as possible for the whole six weeks of Lent. And Jesus himself gives us a, a very important guide to penance, um, to what that penance is um, and it's usually understood as prayer, fasting and almsgiving or charitable giving and I would say to you to try and shape your Lenten practice around prayer, fasting and almsgiving. Um, prayer really does enhance our relationship with God because it's time spent in the presence of God and it makes us more receptive to God. It increases our holiness. It increases the holiness of the whole church. Uh, it unites us. Prayer unites us to God and to our brothers and sisters in faith. So it's important or it would be great if you could try and dedicate some, some more time to prayer during during Lent. The greatest prayer, of course, that the church has is the Mass, the Eucharist. And Jesus told his, his apostles, do this in memory of me. And I really think if we don't go to Mass, we're really missing out on something very important. So I would say to you, please, go to Mass. And priests often remark that they would love to see more teenagers and young people at Sunday Mass. And maybe this Lent, that can become a reality, not just in, not just for the six weeks of Lent, but for, for, for always for the whole year. Our fasting, what does fasting do? Fasting helps us to curb our greed and to be more moderate with food and drink and to be more respectful to God's creation and to the environment, something which is quite high on today's social agenda. And, and fasting itself really is, is quite fashionable. It's a wee bit woke, actually. Um, 
fasting because it's used to be a means of purifying our bodies for losing weight and for getting physically fit. And these are possibly all good things, but a true Lenten and religious fast has a different purpose. Uh, fasting strips us of the barriers and baggage that stop us living more deeply in the presence of God and seeing our neighbour as our brothers and sisters and the world as it truly is. So fasting, you can see that these prayers, these practices, prayer, fasting, and as in a moment I'll say almsgiving, they all kind of coalesce into, into one another. They're all about God, about our neighbour, and about the world. Almsgiving directly aims to repair our relationship with our neighbour. Jesus said we should love God above all things and our neighbour as ourself. And we can't claim to love God if we're deaf to the cry of the poor. I think young people really get that. Um, and there are many people who would benefit from our charity and our charitable giving, our, um, our almsgiving. There are many worthy causes that deserve our support. So I invite you then to choose penances for Lent from all three of these categories, prayer, fasting and almsgiving. And if I can call it a challenge, I challenge you to do three penances, not just one, do three and be serious about them.